actually looks like. So if we set these both to 2K, Okay, so as you can see, we're now in Logic, and I'll just show you what we have to set up to get Qclone to capture any of the profiles we're after, really. So the first thing we need is an audio channel. And on the audio channel, we're going to load in, we're going to load in Q Capture. This makes a horrible pulsing noise a lot of the time. So it can be useful to uh, maybe mute when you're setting this up and getting it up and running. For the minute you can't hear anything because I've sent it to bus one just so I can continue talking. But as you can see, it says transmitting and it's continuously sending out a pulse. Now, we then need this to go to something else. So it has to go to a bus. So we go to output and we're gonna go to bus one and now we're gonna hear it. And what we need to do here mute you for a second. What we need to do here is we need to introduce the plugin that we're going to emulate or we need to be having this go out to our hardware channel and come back in. And in this case, I'm just going to use a say channel EQ, for example. So we'll just load up channel EQ. Channel EQ needs to be active and then below it, we're going to load Q clone. At the minute, you'll see that nothing's occurring because uh, we need to unmute this and when I unmute it you're going to be able to hear it but equally when I hit capture on Q clone uh, we're going to see that it can start making a copy of whatever's occurring in our EQ so if I hit capture like so okay so we can see that's coming in here and it's starting to cause distortion so we need to disable Q clone and it will go flat again and now anything we do on our EQ should get mimicked in Qclone, which is really cool. So if we make like any EQ curves, we can completely copy them. Um, this can be really useful for a number of reasons. So at the minute I've just put the channel EQ on there, which is all well and good, right? But we want to see what some other things do. So. For example, if I was to load the J37 tape plugin, we can actually see the profile that the J37 creates, look. That's just by that tape being introduced into that signal. That's actually what it would be doing to your audio. Um, and if we change the formulas, we can see that we get slight changes as well. How cool is that? Change the speed, we can actually see that the profile changes as well, quite drastically in some cases. And what you could do is you could save these profiles and then apply them. You're not gonna get exactly the same effects because you don't get the harmonic saturation and some of the compression introduced, but you do get the audio profile of it. It would also be quite in interesting to see what some of the uh, others do as well. So for example, if I was to put the Slate Virtual Tape Machine on there, you can see it's drastically different to uh, the J37 and we can swap it here into FG completely different audio profile right there's much more of a change in the low end we change the speed as well we get a lot of drop in that high end huge differences occur in there which is I just find really interesting so that's a little thing you can do with Q clone and it's really great for capturing those specific devices now we're gonna do one more because my favorite EQ is something that we would definitely have to have a look at. So if I go into classics here and I grab the pull tech, if we take the mid EQ. So something the pull techs are really known for is being able to do that boost and dip at the same frequency, right? And I want to show you what that actually looks like. So if we set these both to 2K, then we're going to introduce the dip. You can see as well, there's some slight differences coming just from having this in here. So that's our big dip at 2K. And if we do the maximum boost as well, that's actually the uh, the profile that people really like from the Pultex. It's a really extreme version. I'd normally have it probably around the, like the four and six. It'd be something a bit like that. Um, that's what I like to use to really pick out a particular sound. I love being able to do that with the pull text, but you can see there is something you could do with a parametric EQ once you understand what it looks like, or I could save that 
and uh, share it with you guys, for example. So like that is a UAD pull tech with the dip of 4 dB at 2K and then the boost at 6 dB at 2K. Cool. So that is how you use Qclone from Waves and what it's for. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope it enlightened you in some way. And uh, yeah, if you've got Qclone, have fun playing around with it. I will see you guys on the next one.